In the developing world, there's 20 million people right now who need a wheelchair. About 14 million live in rural areas where they may have to travel two miles every day on really rough ground to go to school or to have a job. Think about trying to ride a regular wheelchair two miles off-road. It's basically impossible if you're pushing yourself with hand rims. It is not very good for traveling long, long distances. The hand-powered tricycles, they're efficient on flat ground, they're really fast, but as soon as you go off-road, they lose traction easily, and they're too large to use in your home. If you don't have an adequate mobility aid, you may be stuck within your home, not be able to go to school, or you may have to drag yourself through the mud in order to get from point A to point B. In the summer of 2005, I had finished my master's and I wanted to spend the summer doing something technology related, but in Tanzania where my girlfriend had been working for the year. So with the MIT Public Service Center, we worked out a project where I would assess the state of wheelchair technology in that country. After coming back to MIT, I decided to start the MIT Mobility Lab where we could pursue longer term, larger scale mobility projects for the developing world to make a machine that could perform like a mountain bike, so it could go fast on the street, but also climb hills, go through mud. But had to do it with a very simple mechanical system, because things like derailers, multi-speed systems, they're just not available or not feasible in the developing world. It was amazing, it was very impressive. I thought he was gonna tip. I didn't think that he was gonna be able to go through that mud, and obviously he did. So the whole trick behind our chair is all the mechanical complexity is in the person, shifting their hands to different points on the levers. On soft, wet grass, I grab high on the levers to get a lot of leverage and torque at the wheel. And as I transition on the pavement, I slide my hands down, which creates a faster rotational velocity, makes me go faster. I can now visit my friends in the village without difficulty, with a little bit of assistance, where there are rough roads now. To break the wheelchair, all the user has to do is pull back, which engages this small lever against the tire and provides friction. When you get indoors, you can take the levers off, stow them, they actually stow behind the seat, and then use our chair just like a normal wheelchair with push rims. It's a, a life saver for those who are more active. Every single moving part on our wheelchair is made from a bicycle component. So our chair can be made and repaired literally in any developing country, even in rural areas, with just a hacksaw, a welder, and a vise. The frame and the seat and the rest of the chair is all made out of local materials, wood and steel, that you can get anywhere. Everything here was made in, in Nairobi, so you should find all of the pieces you need. Bike parts cost a dollar per pound which makes us able to manufacture the drivetrain for under $20 and sell the entire chair for about $200, which is the same price as existing wheelchairs. To get our wheelchair out into the hands of users, a critical element of making that happen is collaborating with local wheelchair manufacturers. They know the culture, they know their clientele, the train type available materials, and they already have the distribution channels to manufacture it and distribute it throughout the developing world. We hope to get our wheelchair out to market sometime in 2011. I was fortunate to be at MIT, where I was in a place that fosters this type of technological development for the developing world. This chain, so this can't be tensioned anymore. Is this fine how it is without jumping? And I think as a country, we need to provide opportunities for other young engineers where they can focus their skills and efforts on helping solve the world's problems. We need to recognize that some of the most pertinent technological and social problems exist in the developing world and create opportunities for academics and scientists like me. And I think this wheelchair is an example of how you can drastically affect people's lives.